Should you buy an Intel-based MacBook now or wait for Apple Silicon MacBooks to be released in the next couple of months? Let's talk about that. Instead of paying Intel for their processors moving forward, Tim Cook announced at WWDC 2020 that all Macs are going to use Apple's own in-house ARM-based chips in the next couple of years. But what does that mean? That means that the same fast but low power, buttery smooth but long-lasting, and powerful yet fanless processors in the iPhone and iPads are coming to Macs. The problem we consumers have now is that we have to figure out if we should buy an Intel-based Mac now or wait for ARM MacBooks. None of us can afford to spend over $1,000 on the wrong Mac. Let's first talk about performance. Although Apple hasn't told us anything yet, we speculate that they will have longer battery life for equivalent performance, just like in the iPhones and iPads. If you look at last year, the 2019 ARM-powered iPad Pro benchmarked higher than the Intel-based 2019 13-inch MacBook Pro. And finally, the iPad Air 4 Geekbench 5 scores just leaked and benchmarked higher than the base 2020 Intel-based 13-inch MacBook Pro. That's right, a super light and fanless iPad Air 4, not even an iPad Pro, but an Air, outclassed a $1,300 Intel-based 3-pound MacBook Pro with an internal fan for active cooling. So if you care about performance, you can expect great things to come from Apple Silicon. What about app compatibility? Apple is promising that most of their first-party Mac apps will work day one, and Apple is already working with third-party developers to convert their apps to work on the new ARM architecture. Big third-party apps like the Adobe Suite and Microsoft Office will be natively supported very quickly, but there is technically no promise for when third-party smaller apps will be fully supported on the new Macs. As a result, Apple will include Rosetta 2, a program that will let you run 64-bit x86 apps on your new ARM and Mac. But although Apple is promising semi-good performance through this translator, no one has really gotten their hands on it yet to validate that statement. And sadly, Rosetta 2 won't bring back support for older 32-bit apps and games. One cool feature we will get, though, is that iPad apps will now be available on the Mac. Hooray! A greater selection of apps is always welcome, but I'm a little worried that this might be confusing for both consumers and developers. I remember when Microsoft tried this and had Metro apps back in Windows 8. As a consumer, it was a little confusing having two Internet Explorer apps. And what about developers? Things 3 sells for $10 on the iPhone, $20 on the iPad, and $50 on the Mac. Does this mean I can just pay for the iPad version and use it on my Mac? So okay, we're going to get good performance with longer battery life and the ability to use iPad apps. Great, sign me up. When can I expect these new Apple Silicon Macs and MacBooks? At WWDC, Apple said that by the end of the year we'll have something. But we didn't hear anything beyond that. We could see a new 12-inch MacBook, 13-inch MacBook Air, or a 13-inch MacBook Pro as early as this month during the release of the iPhone 12. But if you're wanting a silicone-based 16-inch MacBook Pro, you could be waiting up to two years. Apple even stated that more Intel-based Macs are still scheduled to be released. Wait, if Apple is transitioning away from Intel, why should I buy an Intel-based Mac today? How long will Apple even support it? Well, Apple is pretty good with supporting older hardware and stated that it will continue to support Intel-based Macs for years after the transition to Apple Silicon. And based off the fact that Mac OS Big Sur supports MacBook Airs from 2013, I'd say that your Intel-based Mac will be supported until at least 2025. So long story short, I wouldn't worry, you'll receive software updates through the life of your Intel-based Mac. So okay, Apple is going to continue supporting Intel for a few more years. Still though, why would I buy an Intel-based Mac today? Bootcamp. Sadly, you won't be able to run Windows through Bootcamp on these new ARM-based Macs. Even Windows virtual machines from VMware or Parallels will show significant performance hits due to the CPU architecture differences. And that brings us to gaming. For the five of you out there who are like me, who care, traditional 32-bit Steam games will simply not work on the new ARM-based Macs. Apple is bringing controller and keyboard support to most games, but I'm very curious how some of these touch-based only games will be played with a trackpad. Unless Apple is thinking of bringing touchscreens to the Mac. So that leads us to the question. Should I buy an Intel-based Mac now or wait for Apple Silicon? If you need a super fast CPU and GPU performance now, like from a 16-inch MacBook Pro, you require boot camp for important things like gaming, and you run third-party apps that don't get updated very often, then you should buy an Intel-based Mac now, like the 16-inch MacBook Pro. 
If you want a cool and light MacBook that gets excellent battery life, and you want to run iPad apps and games on your MacBook, then consider waiting for the Apple Silicon-based Macs. I'm definitely an early adopter, but in my opinion, buying an Intel-based Mac right now is perfectly fine, especially the 16-inch MacBook Pro. But I think Apple is about to refresh these two with Intel's 10th gen CPUs, so you might want to wait for those as well. But what do you guys think? Are you going to buy an Apple Silicon MacBook or stick with Intel for a few more years? Let me know in the comments below. And finally, hit the like and subscribe button. It really helps the channel out with the YouTube algorithm, and I'll catch you in the next one.